Jamie Faith and his wife, Jennifer Faith, were outside walking their dog. Suddenly, a masked perpetrator snuck up on the couple and shot Jamie seven times. Three times in the head, three times in the torso, and once in the groin. The attacker then turned to Jennifer and wrapped duct tape around her wrist while trying to pull off her wedding ring. The man, who was wearing a dark blue hoodie and commonplace blue surgical mask, was unable to get the ring off of her finger and tried to flee. But as he did so, a neighbor, Emery Wilson, emerged from his home after hearing the shots. He began walking towards Jennifer and saw the masked attacker with a gun in his hand. Fearing for his and Jennifer's safety, he turned and ran back into his home, grabbing his gun before running back out to assist and confront the attacker. But by the time Emery Wilson got back outside, the attacker fled the scene in a black Nissan Titan. Although surveillance footage captured the truck driving away, it could not catch the license plate. The only identifiable marker on the car was a white letter T, the symbol for the Texas Rangers, visible on the back window. Jamie was pronounced dead at the scene. It was a bizarre incident with seemingly no motive. Jamie and Jennifer had been doing what they always did every morning, an enjoyable walk that provided some respite from the anxiety of the COVID-19 pandemic. The neighborhood was considered safe, and shootings in that area were highly uncommon, which only horrified the community more when they learned of Jamie Faith's untimely death. But above all, they were concerned for his heartbroken wife, Jennifer. Three years prior to the killing, Jennifer, Jamie, and their daughter had moved to their Oak Cliff home. A day before Jamie's death, the couple had celebrated their wedding anniversary, and by all accounts seemed perfectly happy. According to friends and neighbors, the family lived comfortably, and even with the stress of the pandemic, the pair appeared to enjoy each other's company and interests. After police had cleared the scene of the shooting, Jennifer was taken down to the station so she could give a statement. She was highly emotional while explaining that she turned around and saw someone come at them and shoot, and tearfully described that the perpetrator had dark eyes. It was a believable performance, but one she wouldn't be able to sustain for long. As part of the routine investigation, police asked her to hand over her cell phone and any electronics so that they could try to ascertain if there was any link between the Faith's family and the perpetrator. Jennifer was fully cooperative and gave authorities complete access and in the following days she truly seemed the epitome of the grieving widow, giving interviews to news stations about the horrific ordeal and pleading with the public to come forward with any information. A GoFundMe page was soon set up for Jennifer to help with any expenses and before long, countless donations were being sent in. As the days turned to weeks, life began to settle down for Jennifer and the community in which she lived, but in the background, the case was gaining momentum. Authorities did not discover anything suspicious on Jennifer's electronic devices, apart from one text message, which she had sent to a friend several states away. The text was simple. Jennifer confessed she had reunited with her high school sweetheart Darren Lopez online. In Jennifer's words, the pair were engaged in an emotional affair that had started seven months before Jamie's death. But bizarrely, despite this, there were no recorded texts or calls between the two, which authorities found odd considering what Jennifer had confessed to her friend. Police followed up on the strange lead and found the contact number and address of Darren Lopez, who served in the U.S. Army as a Green Beret. He had retired from the military due to disabilities he suffered after an IED attack in Iraq, which wounded him and killed 19 fellow soldiers. As of 2020, he owned a piece of land in Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee. He was also recently divorced. Oak Cliff authorities decided to work with law enforcement in Tennessee to uncover if any link could be made between the shooting of Jamie Faith and Lopez by surveilling his property. On November 20, authorities conducted an aerial flyover, which snapped a suspicious photo of something on Lopez's property. A black Nissan Titan, complete with a white T on the rear back window. Authorities realized this was no coincidence and Lopez was indeed tied to the murder of Jamie Faith in some way. Police obtained several subpoenas to access his phone and banking records, which showed that on the day before the killing, he had taken his pickup truck for a checkup before stopping at the local Huck's gas station to withdraw cash. In the store, he was caught on surveillance footage wearing a dark blue surgical mask, like the one the perpetrator was said to be wearing on the day Jamie was shot and killed. Phone records also showed that Lopez had traveled from Tennessee to Dallas, Texas as his cell phone pinged several towers along the route. 
His cell phone also showed that at 2.19 a.m. on October 9, Lopez pulled up to the back of a vacant house right beside Jennifer's house. Then he waited. At 7.30 a.m., Jennifer and Jamie emerged from their home to take Maggie, their dog, for their usual morning walk. Within minutes, Lopez had struck. Lopez and Jennifer Faith had rekindled their romantic relationship at the beginning of the pandemic. Soon after the two began communicating again, the pair would send each other emails and texts professing their love for each other. And then Jennifer began alleging that Jamie was abusing her, sending pictures to Lopez of what appeared to be bruises and injuries that she claimed were at the hands of Jamie. Lopez then began receiving emails allegedly from Jamie, who claimed he knew about the affair and would continue to harm Jennifer physically and sexually. Initially, Lopez urged Jennifer to go to the police, but she claimed she didn't want her daughter to see her father be arrested. Jennifer told Lopez to begin emailing her friend Rob, who corroborated the claims of abuse. After a period of tranquility, Rob, believed to be Jennifer using another email, sent a message to Lopez claiming the abuse had started again. Jennifer and Darren Lopez then had a phone call in which Jennifer allegedly said that the only way for the abuse to stop and for them to be together was to have Jamie killed. And so the two lovers formulated a plan. Soon after the murder, when Jennifer learned that authorities were tracking a Nissan with a T decal, she texted Lopez to remove the decal, which he did the next day, but by then he'd already been caught via surveillance. After being placed at the scene of the crime, Lopez was arrested on January 11, 2021 at a traffic stop and charged with Jamie Faith's murder. While Jennifer had deleted all correspondence from Lopez, he had failed to do the same and investigators had a treasure trove of evidence against him once they'd obtained a search warrant for his phone. Authorities also searched his residence and were able to recover the murder weapon. Jennifer was arrested roughly a month later and charged with obstruction of justice. But just months later, as more details emerged, her charges were upgraded and she was indicted for murder for hire. A major break for the charges to be upgraded was when investigators discovered she had created fake email addresses posing as Jamie and Rob. The photos she had sent Lopez to prove she was being abused were actually images taken from a car accident years earlier. And one turned out to be a simple stock image from the internet. But more egregious details would emerge. Both before and after the murder, Jennifer used the donations from her GoFundMe page to send gifts and money to Lopez, and even supplied him with two credit cards. With these new charges, Jennifer was facing the death penalty, and so she took a plea deal and was sentenced to life in prison. She was also required to pay $6,500 in restitution to Jamie's family and a $250,000 fine. Darren Lopez pleaded not guilty and claimed that he believed he was protecting Jennifer. However, his claims did not move the jury, and he was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 62 years in prison. Jamie Faith's tragic murder unveils a web of deceit and betrayal that ultimately led to his untimely death. Jennifer Faith, once portrayed as the grieving widow, was revealed to be the mastermind behind a sinister plot to have her husband killed. 